Hi guys, it's Alex Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. This tricky little tricky insect has been the perfume reviewer's equivalent of writer's block. I have used an entire 10 mil of this to even try and form opinions and I'm finally doing this review and it feels good. So let's talk about Dragonfly 2021 version by my favorite brand, Zoologist. This perfume came out in 2021. I just said that. And this one was made by Celine Burrell. She also made Squid for the brand. And this one, whenever Zoologist does a relaunch or a reformulation, it's pretty much gonna be an entirely different perfume with an entirely different perfumer's perspective. So I was excited to see what it's like because I like the theme of the Dragonfly. It's about the little iridescent winged thing flying around lily ponds in, you know, a kind of hazy, beautiful atmosphere, calm, serene kind of thing. But let me tell you the notes and then I'll tell you how it smells to the best of my ability. This one has given me more trouble than Sloth did. And if you saw my Sloth review, you will know. So the top notes are grapefruit, rice, angelica, basil, and ginger. The heart is five flowers. Amongst other things, you have geranium, lily, sambac, jasmine, <laughs> rose and mimosa, and then you have some orris root in there and some violet leaf. It's actually water lily, the note, instead of just, you know, your regular run-of-the-mill lily. And the base notes are rain notes. This is themed on an aquatic environment, so that's why that's why that's a thing. Vetiver, cashmeran, oak moss, tonka bean, benzoin, and patchouli. Is it benzoin? Some people say benzoin, some people say benzoin. I say benzoin, some people say benjoin, if you're French. So let me do my best to tell you how this smells. I have had to be like a doctor and call in the second, third, and fourth opinions on this one because the reason it's been tricky is because for me, I can tell you firstly, it's all about the flowers. And when there are this many flowers in a perfume that are blended in the way that this perfume is blended, it makes my job as a reviewer very tricky to dissect it. And sometimes you don't want to, but doing this, I have to for you guys so you know what you're gonna get, or at least what I, what I smell. The opening of this perfume is a huge, sparky, zingy blast of grapefruit and ginger. That's what I get straight away. And both of those things are sitting on a, let's call it a bed of orris root. It's not a waxy, powdery makeup orris root though, but you can tell because of the texture of the way this perfume feels at the beginning. You've got the zingy, and then you have this softness underneath. This perfume, like I said, is all about the flowers, but there are other things that come into play at certain times that are just kind of peeking their head around the corner to say hello, and then sometimes they're not there. It's been very difficult. It's been very, very difficult. You are a nightmare. You are a real, real nightmare. So that's the opening. Sometimes in the opening, I get the cool minty tang of basil. It feels like a cool mintiness, but really what it is is basil. That's only there sometimes. I, I, I only get that 30% out of the times I've worn this, and I've worn the whole 10 mil. I've worn this more than 20 times, believe me. And I've worn it on different days, in different environments, to try and get to the nitty gritty of what it is. And it's really stumped me. Ah! I want to talk about the rice. The rice is something that in this version of Dragonfly has been very much toned down. It was such a big part of the first version of Dragonfly. This one, it's an element, but it's by no, mean, by no means as prominent or kind of almost the star of the show like it was in the other one. It's there. There is a texture of rice. I sometimes get this gentle starchiness from it, but in the opening, you're bedazzled by this zingy grapefruit ginger thing. That's what happens at the beginning. The drying stages is where it gets a little bit more tricky, but I will do my best. So let's talk about these five flowers. I need to talk about the relationship of aquatic with floral in this perfume. We're talking about a pond here, remember? We're not talking about the sea. We're not talking about a fragrance where a perfumer can just put cologne in something and make it smell aquatic and stuff like that. This, the aquatic part of this fragrance comes from certain very well chosen florals. I have smelled aquatic florals before where the aquatic part comes from the flowers as opposed to it being something else. And I don't know what kind of perfume magic it is, but this doesn't smell like the sea. It's not that type of thing. It is a 
very much fantasy idea of aquatic. When you smell it, you can feel that it's an aquatic floral, but it's not watery. It's, it's very tricky to describe, but the flowers that have been chosen in here or the molecules that have been chosen are flowery aquatic molecules. So what kind of flowers does it smell like to me? To me, it airs on the side of a white floral. I'm gonna put it to lily. I can't stand here and say it's water lily because I've never smelled that before in person or in a perfume or in a molecule, but it definitely feels like a combination of maybe jasmine and lily together. It's got a little bit of a pollen type thing. I don't really smell geranium. I don't really smell anything rosy. It's a white floral thing as opposed to any other color floral thing happening. And it's got a sharpness. There is a sharpness there that isn't from the grapefruit. I'm talking about the drying stages now. We are in this white floral realm with some kind of floweriness that feels aquatic. And it's, the, it's a very tricky part to describe because it comes together like this when it dries. Something happens where it becomes a one perfume thing and that is the, the work of a very good perfumer that can create something that smells like a fully realized perfume as opposed to maybe being able to pick stuff out all the time. That's why it's caused me problems. I do apologize, but um, you know, I don't know. What can I say? I can still feel the iris in the drying stages. It's like I said, it's never pronounced, but you can feel this underlying something powdery that isn't coming from a flower. So it's this orris root giving a softness underneath, but ultimately the florals are sharp. If you want me to talk about masculine and feminine, I will say that it leans feminine for review purposes. I will also say that in terms of challenge, zoologists have fragrances that fit every part of the scale right up to you know really challenging things to very gentle and serene things this one sits on the lower end very wearable i think it's really pretty um it somehow feels familiar and, and i'm not sure why um you know it's just a number of florals and woody tones that come out a little bit later and citrus so it's not a formula that you've never smelled but I think it's pretty. I think it's a pretty perfume that delivers certain elements of surprise, like the basil and then the rice occasionally for me. So there are a few hidden surprises, but they don't jump out at you in the way that certain zoologist perfumes behave. Yeah, I got there in the end. The drying stages are even harder to describe for me than the actual wet stages. This is the bit that I've had the most trouble with. The flowers, yeah, they're giving me some trouble, but the drying stage to me is naturally where the woodiness comes out. That happens in a formula sometimes when it develops. And the thing I wanna pin it on is vetiver. There are multiple woody notes happening as well as other things as well in the note list. But really what happens for me is there is something that feels like vetiver, where it's almost rooty and a sharp woodiness that complements the crisp sharpness of the flowers. It never really reaches a soft place. It's kind of got bite the whole time. Do dragonflies bite? Have they even got teeth? If I was a dragonfly, I'd just slap people with my wings. That would be my weapon, because you know, you've got four of them. But yeah, the dry stage is, is pretty tricky. I would just say, and I know this is a really, I guess lazy way to say it, but it just becomes more woody toned, mingled in with the flowers, but it's really all about the flowers and it stays floral all the time for me. The flowers never go away. So if you're really into flowery things, they don't disappear and it doesn't turn into a woody. In terms of longevity, I've had great success with this, especially on wrists, which never really happens with perfume. It always disappears. I would say it's medium, I get, a really big projection for at least two or three hours and then it does come a bit closer I would say I, I can still smell it at least seven hours after I have come home from work and I can still feel it on my wrist sometimes so it performs moderately I would say but altogether it's gonna be a good starter zoologist I say that about certain ones from the brand it's not too scary but there are elements of sparks that are unique i would say so that's all i can say about this one this one is a hump that i have been waiting to get over for a long time so hallelujah 
Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. I'm Alex Romano, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.